and, and if, if everything, if something is wrong, please uh, tell me. Uh, please, excuse, excuse okay. me, uh, please introduce uh, brief, in brief to all of us by yourself. Oh uh, yeah, well, my okay. name is, my name is uh, a friend, uh, Mesura Montes from Mexico, University of Veracruz. I'm working in the Artificial Intelligence Research Center. Uh, actually, the name of my group is Artificial Intelligence Research and Application Group. We are working on, on um, uh, how to, to, to take these, those artificial intelligence techniques to solve real world problems. Um, uh, in fact, the, the, um, the, the agenda of the presentation includes a brief introduction of my institution uh, to, to, to locate it in the, in the map. Um, after that, I will talk about uh, the, the tools that we are using, particularly uh, the tools that I am using for, for problem solving. Uh, after that, I will talk about uh, a little bit uh, the um, basic research on this type of uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools. And at the end, I will talk about some applications, uh, uh, problems that we are trying to, to solve uh, with these uh, tools. So, um, uh, the, the first point of the agenda is a, about my, my university, my institution. Um, it is located uh, close to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Mexico is a, is a big country, not, not as big as India, but, but it is big, it's a, it's a big one in, in America. And the state of Veracruz is located in the coast near the, the Gulf of Mexico in the, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and Jalapa, the place uh, where my uh, institution is located, is precisely at the center part of the state. Um, Jalapa is the capital city of the state of Veracruz. This uh, long state is, is Veracruz. Um, and I, I give you some photographs about Jalapa, which is um, a city located close the mountains in, in, uh, in the central uh, part of Veracruz. And uh, if you can see the, 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 the last of the three photographs, the, the, the last one is uh, um, uh, a photograph of the research center, which is a very nice house uh, where the laboratories and uh, um, the uh, rooms and the auditoriums and all the facilities are located. And um, Finally, I give you a, a, a very nice picture of uh, Jalapa, which is, uh, you, maybe you can see now that it is located very close to the mountains and, and at the, at the uh, far part of the picture, you can see the highest mountain in Mexico, which is called Citlaltepetl. Uh, it is the highest mountain in Mexico and it is located very near from Jalapa. Um, okay. So uh, let's start about the type of uh, tools that we are using to solve real world problems. Uh, particularly my research interests are focused on uh, evolutionary algorithms. We are uh, studying them, we are uh, applying them to solve problems. The, uh, just to, to, to briefly introduce them, evolutionary algorithms are based on the evolution theory and survival of the fittest. Uh, which means that we are trying to evolve solutions to uh, complex problems by using the computer as a means to get competitive um, ways to, 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 to deal with complex problems. Uh, particularly, they are very useful in search and optimization problems. Uh, a second uh, set of tools that we are using, uh, actually, uh, uh, um, before that, I will tell you about the, ty the, the, the type of evolutionary algorithms that we are using. Um, we are using, for example, genetic algorithms, which is one of the most uh, known uh, evolutionary algorithms, but we are using other, other uh, evolutionary algorithms, for example, evolution strategies, which are very good to solve um, 
uh, uh, problems in, in, in continuous spaces. Uh, we are using evolutionary programming, which is a, a, a very uh, compact evolutionary algorithm, which is very useful, uh, particularly for some type of applications. Uh, we are also using uh, differential evolution, which is a very recent ev evolutionary algorithm, which works very well uh, on different type of problems. And we are also using other type of uh, metaheuristics algorithms, not only the, the traditional evolutionary algorithm. For example, we are using scatter search, which is an evolutionary algorithm, but, but uh, um, uh, in contrast with the previous ones, scatter search is a deterministic evolutionary algorithm, not a um, stochastic evolutionary algorithm as the, as the previous ones. And uh, in fact, if the problem required is we are using other metaheuristics. The other um, tool that we are using, and uh, I hope you are, you are looking at the, um, now at the uh, slide, is swarm intelligence. Swarm intelligence groups other type of algorithms. In this case, we are not trying to, to um, model the survival of the fittest. In this case, we are trying to uh, um, emulate the cooperative behavior of organisms. Uh, and in this case, the communication is the key to let these uh, simple organisms to cooperate and solve problems uh, because uh, individually, they, uh, these, these problems will be uh, very difficult to solve, but in, in, uh, if, if these organisms join this, their efforts, they can solve the type of problems. And um, these algorithms are very uh, good to solve uh, optimization problems as well, but also they are very useful on classification, clustering, robotics, and, and other type of applications. Uh, some examples of um, swarm intelligence algorithms, and one of the most known is the particle swarm optimization, which is inspired in uh, some behaviors of, of bird flocks. We are also working with the ant system, which is based on um, the uh, foraging behavior of ants. We are also working with other algorithms, for example, the bacterial foraging optimization algorithm, which is based on the uh, foraging behavior of the E. coli bacteria, bacterium. Uh, we are working also with bees, with the artificial bee colony, which is a very nice algorithm to solve uh, numerical optimization problems. And uh, we are taking also some inspiration for the artificial immune system to um, solve particular, uh, some particular problems as, as, as I will detail later. Okay. Um, uh, based on, those, in, in, on the study of these algorithms, the, uh, my group is divided into two research interests. The first one is the, the basic research on these type of algorithms. We are trying to design good ones. We are, we are trying to understand their behavior and the way that they solve problems. And we are also interested on applications. And this small um, talk uh, today uh, tries to, to give you some examples on basic research and also on applications. So let me um, start the third part of the talk, which is the, the research on nature-inspired algorithms. What, what type of uh, studies are, uh, we are doing with these um, algorithms? For example, we are dealing with dynamic constraint optimization. Uh, these type of problems are very interesting because uh, in this case, uh, we are dealing with a problem where the, the solution that we are looking for is moving. So the algorithm needs, to, um, needs elements to track this uh, moving optimum. So uh, the problem becomes uh, quite complex in some steps of the um, search. Particularly, we are dealing with differential evolution. And we are uh, studying some repair methods because we, are, um, we have some results about the importance of using repair methods for this type of uh, dynamic problems because as the uh, condition of the problem changes, 
then we need to repair some solutions to uh, get them uh, ready for the new conditions of the problem. We are also uh, in including some interesting concepts like the immigrants. Immigrants in this case are solution, new solutions added to the population in order to give some fre a fresh start to the algorithm after a change is detected. And finally, we are um, studying the use of memory in this type of algorithms because it is also, imp also important for the algorithm to remember some good solution in previous, um, in previous times of the search because maybe they will be useful later in the same search. Another uh, type of basic research on these algorithms is the surrogate assisted constraint optimization. In this case, we are trying to um, give the algorithm the ability to evaluate some solutions with um, not the uh, real model that we are trying to optimize. In this case, we are trying to um, evaluate some solutions in an approximate model, which is cheaper uh, than the original one. So we can uh, let the algorithm to run faster in a computer and give gives, uh, good results uh, in less time. Uh, we are working also with uh, differential evolution, and in this case, we are combining some uh, machine learning techniques, particularly some um, regression uh, techniques, for example, KNN, to approximate the, uh, original, uh, the, the original problem, the original function that we are trying to optimize. And we are dealing, as uh, the title of the slide says, with constraint problems. So we need to also consider constraint handling techniques because it's important to mention that evolutionary algorithms uh, were not designed to solve constraint problems. We need to add some information about the constraint handling. And uh, we are also dealing with memetic constraint optimization. In this case, we are trying to combine uh, with an evolutionary algorithm, for example, with differential evolution, we are trying to combine local search operators. In this case, differential evolution works as the global search uh, algorithm, and we are adding some local search to uh, improve the quality of the results. But uh, different design questions arise in this type of problem because we need to know to, uh, what type of solution do I um, have to apply the local search at uh, the frequency to apply the local search. And these, uh, particular problems becomes difficult in the design. So we need to, to, um, to uh, careful design the mimetic algorithm for this type of problems. Uh, we are also working with another type of uh, dynamic uh, uh, problem, in this case, multi-objective dynamic optimization. And uh, the main difference with the previous uh, dynamic problem that I mentioned before is that in this case, we are dealing with more than one objective, and also we are adding some immune systems um, ideas to deal with the, the chain reaction once the, um, the um, behavior of the objective functions change. And we are also using some memory in this case. Okay, just the, the last part of the talk is about the applications. Now we are moving to some other domains where we can apply these type of algorithms. For example, we are um, using these uh, evolutionary algorithms for time series discretization because we want to discretize some time series. In this case, this is a very nice application because these time series are from the, the cervical cancer study and we, we are uh, trying to uh, disc discretize them in order to um, um, uh, get this discretized time series as an input for a classifier and get some pre-diagnostic for the uh, cervical cancer uh, illness. We are also using um, this type of algorithms for another problem, in this case is image registration problem we are, we are trying to um, um, uh, uh, register uh, not only one image, but a, um, a video is that we want to uh, um, 
registrate. In this case, this video is about the, the colposcopy study. So we are trying um, to uh, eliminate those movements that have this type of video because we need to carefully select one region of the area, in this case of the um, area of the image, to provide um, a, a very um, um, a, a very good um, uh, pre-diagnostic of the uh, cervical cancer um, disease. Another application which is quite recent in our group is the model selection. We are, we are using um, evolutionary algorithms to um, uh, provide all the elements of the um, uh, knowledge discovery data. We are trying to find a good uh, pre-processing for the data and good classifier and a good post-processing for the data and, and the parameter for each one of the methods. So we are asking the um, evolutionary algorithm to provide us with all that information uh, and uh, keep the, the user from defining all these um, elements in the um, knowledge discovery data process. This is a very huge project because the, the, um, the computational time uh, is, is very expensive in this case. And we are trying to solve it uh, by using evolutionary multi-objective optimization because we want a very good um, a data discovery process which provides very good results, for example, very good classification results, but also which is not very expensive regarding computational time. We are also uh, uh, cooperating with some people from the uh, mathematics department here at the university and we are solving, for example, one, some uh, uh, problem, for example, the mass transfer problem, uh, which uh, is based on, on, the, on some function to, to move some, some mass from one uh, side to another. And in this case, for the, the, the college for the mathematics department, it was very important to get some convergence proof of the, of the search algorithm that we designed to solve this problem. So in this case, we decided to go from, to scatter search because scatter search is a deterministic algorithm and the convergence proof are easier to get uh, uh, with respect to a traditional evolutionary algorithm which has stochastic elements. Uh, we are also working with unsupervised learning. In this case, we are working with evolutionary multi-objective clustering. We are designing, improving some um, uh, approaches in, on this regard. And um, it, it was a very nice work in, in this application because we, um, uh, we are sure that our approach was good based on an um, evolutionary multi-objective optimization metrics, but also uh, the approach was good on clustering metrics. So we are, we are, we are providing very good search algorithms which, which can provide very good uh, solution for a particular domain. And finally, we are working with some colleagues from the um, um, uh, computer vision area and uh, they are very interested in fall and pause detection because we are uh, designing some um, uh, systems for older people uh, uh, elder people who live alone in their houses so they, they are trying to get some systems to detect uh, how they fall so we are using in this case a genetic algorithm for the feature selection you know and they can get the important points of the image